Welcome to UCLA Radiology. This is Susan Muir from UCLA Medical Center, Los Angeles, California. Podcast number three is a case of midgut volvulus and malrotation in a 40-year-old infant. A 40-year-old infant presented with minimal stool passage and abdominal distension. Per the mother, the baby had been feeding well, although she did note that there were several green-tinged spit-ups. The infant was not vomiting. A KUB was obtained. In the neonate, it is difficult to differentiate between large and small bowel segments. You can see, however, that there are several dilated bowel segments. Related to the non-passage of stool, the NICU team ordered an enema study. They were concerned about malrotation and Hirschsprungs. Contrast enema is no longer the study of choice for determination of malrotation. This is because 20 to 30 percent of infants with malrotation may have a normal sequel position in the left lower quadrant. Following is the omnipaque enema. The infant was placed in the supine position and a small Foley catheter inserted into the rectal vault. Omnipaque contrast was then slowly injected with the infant in the right and then the left lateral decubitus position. The infant was fussy and crying, and it was difficult to reflex contrast proximally. We placed the infant in the supine position, and there is a strong hint and suspicion of malrotation. The resident wanted to see if we could actually reflex contrast into the terminal ileum. Thus, we placed the infant back into the lateral decubitus position and slowly injected more contrast. Also, the infant went into the right lateral decubitus position, and then finally, supine position, where it was noted that indeed there is a malrotation and no need for any further contrast via the rectum. At this point in time, related to the history of green tinge spit up, an upper GI study was ordered. Malrotation may be associated with volvulus. Some institutions will first assess for midgut volvulus using ultrasound. This technique will be discussed in further podcasts. At UCLA, an omnipaque upper GI is the study of choice. We do not use gastrographin. This contrast is an ionic hypertonic solution that if aspirated can result in fatal pulmonary edema. We inject contrast through an OG or an NG tube to control the amount of contrast intake. A contrast distended stomach can obscure the duodenum. Following is the upper GI study. Contrast was slowly injected through the patient's OG tube as he was turned from the supine to the right lateral decubitus position. We slowly injected a little bit more contrast and now we finally saw the duodenum. You can see that the duodenum is actually a little bit dilated and there's a faint suspicion of a beak. We then put the infant in the supine position and sure enough, we noted the corkscrew appearance of the proximal small bowel. The large bowel is to the left of midline, which we already knew. A further image demonstrates a little bit more distal passage of contrast, but again, that typical corkscrew appearance of midgut volvulus. Corkscrew small bowel and large bowel to the left of midline. This is diagnostic of midgut volvulus malrotation. The infant went to the operating theater and the pediatric surgeon reported a 540 degree twisting of the small bowel, but no bowel necrosis. Twists of 720 degrees and greater have been reported. Increasing degrees of volvulus will obstruct the bowel lumen and also lymphatic drainage, venous drainage, and eventually arterial supply. Obstruction of the vascular supply is a life-threatening condition requiring immediate surgical intervention. In the vomiting infant, the primary anatomic concerns are pyloric stenosis and midgut volvulus with malrotation. The goal of an upper GI is to exclude or demonstrate volvulus and or malrotation. These are true pediatric surgical emergencies. Volvulus is defined as twisting of the small bowel around the superior mesenteric artery axis. Volvulus, a short mesenteric base, is prone to twisting, resulting in abnormal fixation of the small bowel. 
Lad's bands. These are dense, fibrous tissues which extend from the cecum to the abdominal wall across the duodenum, resulting in extrinsic duodenal obstruction. With malrotation, there are abnormal points of mesenteric fixation involving the duodenal jejunal junction and the cecum. In this schematic on the left-hand side, you can see the normal positions of the fixed cecum in the left lower quadrant and the duodenal jejunal junction in the right upper quadrant. The right-hand schematic demonstrates LADS bands, those thick fibrous tissues that come from the cecum across the duodenum to the abdominal wall, resulting in extrinsic compression on the duodenum. In medget volvulus, the intestines have a tendency to twist around the short mesenteric pedicle. Small bowel wraps around the SMA axis, impairing blood supply. Volvulus is most common in the first month of life, with the majority of cases presenting in the first week of life. The symptoms are related to obstruction, with the infant presenting with sudden onset of bilious vomiting after toleration of feeds initially. Such a history should be considered a medgut volvulus until proven otherwise, as volvulus is a surgical emergency. An infant with pyloric stenosis might present with a similar history, although the vomitus is not usually bile stained. The schematic on the left demonstrates the bowel twisting upon itself, and on the right, there is a volvulus. Please visit our pediatric imaging wiki site for additional interesting cases in pediatric imaging.